In this video, we explore the life of adventurer and daredevil. Henry Coasey, who tragically met his end. In a horrifying crocodile attack. Despite knowing that his adventurous lifestyle would likely lead to his premature death, Henry continued to push himself to his limits and chase thrills. He grew up in South Africa and found school tedious, but thrived in the art. After graduating, he went traveling and eventually joined the military before returning to Africa in search of adventure. In 1997, the Zambezi River became a popular destination for thrill-seeking tourists, and Henry landed a job with Peter Meredith's White Water Rafting Company. Despite having no experience kayaking or rafting, Henry quickly became a popular guide, leading tourists through Grade 5 rapids. However, he was known for taking risks, including running a deadly Class 6 rapid on his own without telling anyone. Henry's love for adventure ultimately led to his tragic end. When he was devoured by a 15-foot, 2,000-pound crocodile while on an adventure with his friends. In his memoirs, he wrote about feeling a deep depression after each expedition, only finding happiness when he was alone and pushing himself to his limits. While Henry's story is a tragic one, it serves as a reminder of the risks that come with living an adventurous life. Hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this one. Peter and Henry formed a strong bond over their shared love for adventure. In 2004, they set out on an incredible mission with a small team to follow the River Nile from its source to the sea. Together, they paddled 4,130 miles from Lake Victoria to the Mediterranean. This journey was a precursor to Henry's solo paddle of the Congo River a few years later. It took him five months to complete, during which he had to fend off ambushes by cannibalistic Gami tribesmen, evade hippos and crocodiles, and sleep on the riverbanks with only his bivouac and campfire for protection. Upon returning home, Hendry realized it was time to settle down. His adventurous lifestyle couldn't last forever, and he was taking too many risks. He had met someone special and realized there was more to life than just adrenaline-fueled expeditions. But in 2010, an email from two American kayakers, Ben Stokesbury and Chris Korbalik, changed everything. They wanted to navigate the upper Congo River, and they knew that Hendry was the perfect guide for the job. Initially, Hendry declined the invitation, sticking to his decision to leave kayaking and exploration behind. But after months of helping Ben and Chris plan their trip, Henry felt that familiar restlessness return. He succumbed to the promise of an epic adventure and joined them on the two-month trip through the Congo's tributaries. They began along the Rusi River at the end of October 2010, planning to be home by Christmas. As they journeyed along the river, the trio spoke with locals who lived on the riverbanks, learning about the challenges they faced. One community mentioned a major crocodile problem. In the past 20 years, 125 people had been taken by a single, massive crocodile. Henry and the others made a mental note of this comment. What they didn't know was that the years of battles in the region between neighboring communities had resulted in millions of deaths, most of which were people being dumped in the rivers and eaten by crocodiles. As a result, these reptilian beasts had grown to enormous sizes and developed a taste for human blood. On December 7, 2010, the trio had been paddling for some time when they came to a sharp bend in the river. Although Ben and Chris were professional paddlers and well-known in the world of extreme sports, Hendry had to teach them how to kayak in the African wilderness. He showed them how to create noise by tapping their kayaks regularly, how to stay away from eddies where hippos might attack, and how to keep clear of sunbathing crocodiles on the riverbanks. On the day of the attack, the three kayakers had a peaceful paddle down the river. They spotted some small crocodiles on the banks, but they posed no threat, and the group continued on their way, admiring the natural beauty around them. As they paddled, they faced challenging white water and calm stretches that wound through the African bush. They stayed close together, concentrating on their paddling and scanning the waterways for danger. 
Unfortunately, they were completely unaware of the predator lurking below the surface. Suddenly, an enormous crocodile appeared and attacked Henry, seizing him in its jaws and pulling him underwater. Ben and Chris were paralyzed with terror as they watched their friend disappear. They frantically paddled away, eventually making it to a nearby village to seek help. The villagers were reluctant to assist the kayakers, as they had lost many of their own to crocodile attacks over the years. Despite this, Ben and Chris searched for their friend, but it was too late. They eventually found Henry's kayak floating down the river with no signs of a struggle or injury. Henry's disappearance left his girlfriend in a state of shock. As she logged onto Facebook, she was bombarded with condolence messages for Henry. She couldn't believe what she was seeing, this must be some kind of mistake. They were supposed to be meeting soon, and he was on the verge of completing his final expedition. Despite being devastated and heartbroken, she still went to the Ugandan bar on New Year's Eve, hoping against hope to find him.